Okay, so now that we've gone over the rules of debits and credits, and you've hopefully, you might not have memorized yet, but this is a spot in your book you're going to look back at and, and start to remember how to do them. Uh, we need to figure out what we're going to do with that information. Well, what we do with that information is we journalize transactions. So we are shifting from what we did prior in the prior chapter, where we had pluses and minuses to doing a journal entry. The journal entry, the parts of a journal entry, we have a date, we have an account, one, uh, one account, and then we have a second account. Posting references, well, I'm not going to go over um, right now. I need to add anything to this right this second. And then we have our debits and credits. Now remember, our debits must always equal our credits no matter what. So if the debit is 10,000 and I only have two accounts, then the credit side must also be 10,000. So that's always the case. Now, if I happen to have three accounts, and I'm indenting this just because that's my, that's just a habit of mine for credit, for the credit side, you don't necessarily have to. It does make it easier to read. If I have a whole bunch of accounts on the credit side, and I can have a whole bunch on the credit side or the debit side, just to show you as an example, um, debits will still have to equal credit. So this, these, this credit number can't be right. So 10,000, so let's say this one's 3,000, 2,500, and 4,500. Let's see if that adds up. So this is 10,000. If I add all these together, which it sums right here for me, is 10,000. It's 10,000 as well. My debits still equal my credits, okay? Same thing if it went the other direction. If I had, if this were a debited account, and I could even have multiple debits. You would never have one on both sides on the same one, by the way. So if this were the case, this could be 3,000, oops, not 30,000, 3,000, and this could be 9,000, because they have to equal the same in total. So if you're looking at a transaction and you know the accounts, you're doing well, and you're looking at something like this, it's really easy to figure out what your last one is because it's got a balance. There's no option but for it to balance the debits and credits. So every time. Um, okay. So the first example the book gives is it says Chris Clark deposited $25,000 in the bank in the name of Net Solutions in exchange for common stock. So Chris Clark deposited $25,000. In our last chapter, we knew that that increased our cash. Well, what type of account is cash? Cash is an asset, and I need to increase it. It increases with a debit. So I would debit cash for $25,000. Um, the other part of this is they bought common stock, and that's a stockholder's equity. That's under the stockholder's equity section. And under according to our rules of debits and credits, Stock is, and by the way, increase the common stock. I need to increase it with a credit for common stock. So our credit on stock for 25,000. Okay, and I can confirm these balance. My debits equal my credit, so that's good. Now, in the final video for this, um, I'm gonna go over a little bit different method, the method that I use to make sure that we're doing our journal entries correctly. And then we're gonna do the journal entries from the chapter. That's kind of the bulk of this. Um, so we'll do that in the next video.